next paper for us, which is on empowering digital education professionals. Good afternoon, everybody, and hello, online audience. I'm fully aware I'm in between you and your drinking reception. I know for sure which one's more attractive. <laughs> okay? I really appreciate you are still staying here and uh, listen. And so let me just say, OK. Yeah, uh, my name is Fabi Gan, and I work for um, a Center for Teaching and Learning uh, at the University of Oxford. And so today I'm going to talk about uh, a CMOD support scheme. We have a CMOD, you, you heard of it. And we developed a CMOD support scheme at Oxford to support our colleagues to ap apply for CMOD. And you know, uh, anyone can individually like, apply for CMOD, but we decided to support uh, our colleagues um, as a cohort. We started last year. Uh, we have about uh, 26 to 30 people at the moment, the first cohort. It's not too bad. And we, we talk about today you know, uh, at the conference uh, about COVID a lot. And the thing about COVID, actually, uh, based on, as you can see, this quote uh, by uh, uh, Oxford University uh, Press, they compiled uh, a report talking about that there's a lot of negative impact on, on us with COVID, right? But one of the benefits, as you can see here, is really for us, the good news is like the technology adoption has been accelerated quite a lot. They estimated about five years. But they have this like, fast trend moving forward faster, but the provision of support and the people in the university are still remain the same, right? So there's a mismatch here. So for the support scheme, what I'm talking about is why we introduced this scheme and give you some overview, what we look like, how we did it, and share with you some benefits of having a support scheme, you know, rather than let them apply themselves. And then I want to share with you what we learned so far. We learned quite a lot. We only got 15 minutes, uh, I'll be short. So the reason um, why we introduced the scheme. So think about during the pandemic. So we suddenly had to uh, work from home, right? So um, the people feel, sort of felt quite isolated, you know, and my colleagues start talking to me on team, say, look, I'm not quite sure what's going on in the team and what's going on in the department. And we realized actually people are quite isolated and what we started to do at Oxford is like we try to coordinate a lot of um, sort of like e-learning activities support uh, 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 teams and together to try to talk about, talk to the library, IT services, and talk to uh, different departments and how we can better support our students and staff. So um, as I said earlier, the COVID has led to the high demand uh, uh, on professional development as well, because it's just imagining uh, we have more technologies and more people using the technologies, but we still have the same similar number of staff. And you know, so uh, there's a mismatch there. So, you, so the staff need to learn more about technology, learn more about how they can uh, be more capable to support our students and staff. And so we sort of also realized, this might be a little bit controversial here, for the university normally they recognize the the, the, the achievement of academic staff, a lot of recognition, right? But for support staff, admin staff, it's very rarely to get any recognition. So we realized CMOT might be a very good scheme for us, not only try to find a channel to support our staff, but also, um, you know, just celebrate their achievement, right? Celebrate their achievement and reflect on what they have been uh, achieved. So, um, and also the last point, talking about the CMOT is evolving and the different standards, we need to ca catch up with, with the uh, guidelines and, and standards. So those are reasons. So those uh, what it look like, our uh, support scheme. If you ask me to summarize the scheme by using four words, it would be online plus offline and asynchronous plus synchronous. So what I mean by that, as you can see in the middle, uh, we run five monthly workshops, this in person, because we realize if you do hybrid, and a lot of people just do not turn up, okay? And the find an excuse, or, or you know, uh, to not, not, not turn up. So we run in-person uh, workshops. Workshop one, we look at the all core areas of a C mode, and like overview, we talk about what it's about, 
and what kind of thing you need, you need to put into this uh, core area. I think about the topics and the projects and the ideas because it's hard to, 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 uh, to, uh, to sort of put it on paper. And then the workshop two, two, three, and four, we focus on each core area. We get into detail and we talk about examples and also we uh, allocate 10 to 15 minutes allow the people to really sit down individually in exam condition, I'm joking. But they just need to be very quiet, work on their own, to write down what they need to put into each section, so have some initial idea. The, the idea is, they not only, by end of the workshop, they not only learned about what each section is about, but also can take away something they have wrote it down and they can carry on working on it. And the last workshop, we just wrap up and look at all the sections and talk about logistics and how you can submit and so all these all these like issues. And in between, as you can see, the red text here, we what we call it like uh, office hours, which is weekly uh, like Microsoft team sessions. And just realize that <laughs> and the weekly like uh, um, uh, Microsoft team sessions. So we answer questions and people might have 30 minutes every week and we try to arrange on different days and different time because everybody is busy. So in addition to that, I'm talking about like we have a CMOD Canvas website which is a one-stop shop uh, which has all the resources from workshop and from OAT and the guidelines and putting into one place for people. And also we have a, a dedicated uh, Microsoft uh, Teams uh, team area for people to ask questions. And so that's what, what I call, call, call them like offline, online, asynchronous, and synchronous uh, sort of like support. And very quickly, I even can't see, you know, standing here, uh, the text here. Uh, the benefit of scheme, why we have this support scheme then? So we designed sort of like very short, thank you, thank you very much. Um, so we designed a very short like survey between each workshop, we ask them like very basic three questions. What worked well, what didn't work well, and how we can improve it. And those are the positive like sort of feedback. Uh, I can share the negative one if you like. Um, so the first one, for example, the in-person format uh, made a huge difference. Being able to hear about other people's experience was very helpful as we have been able to visualize and discuss uh, concrete examples, which is so important because the first time when I talked to my colleagues, they said, okay, what am I going to put into this like, section, right? Okay, I don't know much about technology, but after talking to colleagues, they discovered actually, they know a lot, they use a lot, right? And the second one, talking about collaboration, uh, working with the colleagues together uh, to receive mutual feedback. This is what we discovered. We encourage people to work in pairs, you know, either based on their level of uh, the C mode uh, pathway or the submission time, working together to help each other and also sort of like uh, uh, set example for each other. And the reading through a colleague's C mode, as you can see, section forced me to engage with the core principle and the guidelines and put my accessors hat on. This is very, very important. And we talk about, if you think about, imagine looking at your own uh, C mode portfolio as an accessor, right? how you can improve your portfolio. So by looking at other people's portfolio as an accessor, and then really help them. And the most important benefit, as this guy said, okay, is, is like, you know, uh, get down and do the things, you know, schedule it, right? Uh, because what we found actually, everyone is busy, and also they realize the importance of professional development, but they often think C mode is not part of their job, so that all the other priorities took over. So we said, you very important schedule, 20 minutes here, 30 minutes there, to work on the session. Small steps, uh, then, then, then you get there. And last comment, as you can see, talking about the uh, working on your own uh, in exam condition, as I said earlier, uh, which is very, very uh, helpful. And what we learned so far, yeah, we need to offer flexibility. So that's why I'm talking about in person, uh, online, asynchronous, and synchronous. Because if you only offer one format, uh, it's very hard uh, to uh, get people on board. And second one, yeah, you do need to uh, uh, allocate some writing time during the session, 
and they can take away something, they feel more productive. And the last one is peer, peer learning, pairing up together to like, you know, um, I often, you know, even told my colleague, you know, when I do my same work properly, just nag me, remind me, I need to, I need to do that. So that's sort of like uh, the three most important things we learned. And that's it. Any questions? Thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions? I mean, if you uh, plan to do any similar support scheme, I'm aware there are a couple of universities are doing a similar support scheme already. And yeah, please like, get in touch and uh, we can share and learn together. Yes, we've got a question. Yes. Nice and handy and close as well, aren't you? Hi, thank you for that. I was wondering if part of your pipeline of you know, the workshops, if you have embedded internal reviews, because one of the feedbacks I you know, informally have heard about such a, um, application is that you, you really don't know what the reviewer is going to say. So it's very difficult to gauge, to, to gauge the quality that, and, and, and the, as you say, the, the standards are evolving and so on. So I don't know how your institution are channeling that uh, support to make sure that the uh, people applying get a better idea of what to expect from the review process, if you have internal processes to support that. I don't know if I you understand my question. So in terms of internal review, do you have a process for that? Do I have what, sorry? Internal review processes. Internal So process. what happens after the applications get submitted in your institution? So this, we just started pilot this scheme, and uh, so, yeah, we just encourage as many people as possible to apply uh, on this, on this uh, uh, sort of program. So do you, Maybe. Uh, I think the question was around, do you, do you uh, offer a, a review? So do you review the portfolio before it's submitted? Uh, absolutely, things absolutely. Give an idea of the review process. Yeah, absolutely. We doing this kind of like a peer review during a workshop, uh, but myself also uh, look at colleagues' portfolio. I got my CMOT, that's through my age now, 2006. <laughs> that was a very, very early stage. So I had a lot of experience uh, assessing other people's application. Um, so, but I also got two more colleagues now. They submitted their CMOT uh, October last year, and they're going to uh, one of them already got a CMOT. You're absolutely right. We need to sort of like more uh, support and uh, yeah, peer support. Thank you. We have one question on VVOX, and then I think it's time for drinks after that. Yeah, um, so how many staff have you supported through this? Yeah, from uh, October last year to now, we have 29 colleagues, and two of them uh, are submitted and almost successful because uh, one of them already got a CMOT. And uh, in May, three more people submitted. And yeah, I'm aiming to uh, encourage everybody to submit by uh, end of May next year. That's my mission. Thank you. Fantastic. Uh, I think we should show appreciation to Fawei for his presentation on CMOL. Thank you very much, guys. I can hear it. it sounds like the disco's about to start out there. I've heard a bit of music. I know, like... so. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>